Oh, howdy everyone, it's Sam. Welcome back to the Wobble and Jaw Sports channel. If you're new around here, hope I can get you to consider liking the content and subscribing to the channel. And if you are a regular around these here parts, thank you very much for the continuous support. North Queensland Cowboys get their second victory of the 2023 season, defeating a very gallant, a very tough and in parts unlucky Gold Coast Titans, 24 points to 12. I usually do these match reaction reviews live, but the dodo bird is out in force because so too is the rain, clouds, and thunder. So I'm going to err on the safer, better side of caution and uh, pre-record this and get it up as soon as possible. Well, Cowboys, man, when they are in their own territory or around that halfway mark, bro, they can attack. They really can attack, especially when you've got Tom Dearden who can break the line and with his speed and with his intelligence and go 30 meters in the click of a finger. And then we get down into that 20 meter zone, bro, and we rely heavily on luck and Chad Townsend's own personal luck as well. Fair freaking dinkum. It is a very expensive victory and a very expensive loss for the Gold Coast Titans as well. There are injuries to both of these sides. Murray Taolungi has done his MCL out for at least three weeks. Bugger. Geoma Shibasaku, who was two times better. So good tonight for the North Queensland Cowboys. Filling in that Pettihiku role very admirably. Unfortunately, he just ran himself so freaking much. He did his hamstring with about 15 minutes remaining. James Tamo for the North Queensland Cowboys came off limping with a foot injury. So I think he'll probably miss at least one week, probably two unfortunately. And for the Gold Coast Titans, Kieran Foran and AJ Brimson went off with a calf hamstring injury, uh, respectively. I think the calf injury was for AJ Brimson. And they look like they're going to miss a handful of weeks as well because of the injuries that they picked up this afternoon. A very, very expensive game of footy, but there's also uh, a, a suspension looming large over Jeremiah Nene. He tipped up Philip Sammy in that second half and got sent to the sin bin. I think it was fair enough. Do I think Philip Sammy contributed to it? I do. I, I do think he definitely looked for the turf, but Jeremiah Nene, I think he's going to miss a week, unfortunately. Fingers crossed. Uh, he can get off it uh, because we're going to need him next week. But I think Jeremiah Nene is going to miss a week at the very least, at the very least, unfortunately, uh, because he tipped up Philip Sammy into an awkward position. North Queensland Cowboys, they've been noted to have very fast starts so far in 2023. They had their slowest of the entire year so far because while they got through their first set, a penalty was given away by Jordan McLean and the Gold Coast Titans gave it to David Fafida, who had raw meat for the entire week and worked out about 22 hours uh, in a single day, every single day this week. David Fafida was huge for the Titans this afternoon. Got the ball from Kieran Foran. Brian Kelly ran a decoy run and David Fafida... His looming presence sucked in Kyle Felt, who again was defending way too in, way too in off his wing. And Fafita said, there you go, Khan Pereira. And Khan Pereira went straight down the edge and scored the first try of the game for the Gold Coast Titans in just the third minute. The Cowboys then had a sustained piece of pressure in the game, probably five or six minutes, um, almost immediately after. A couple of cents went by, and then the Cowboys found themselves in good territory for about five minutes, and they just couldn't. They just couldn't break the line, and that was because the Cowboys' attack inside the red zone was not crash hot, and also credit to the Titans. They defended very, very stoutly, uh, not just in that period, but throughout most of that game because 
uh, alas, they did fall. Uh, they, they did cop the sword up the backside uh, and come for the full time siren. Um, but the the problem, or one of the problems I've got with the Cowboys' attack at the moment, is that while it's not particularly our absolute best starting second row combination, the ball's going all the way out left. It's going all the way out right. But there's no fair dinkum, hard running second rower in Cohen Hess or Jeremiah and I that can that can see a gap and just burst on through it. It's not happening enough. There needs to be a forward that comes in to 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 just mix it up a bit and for them to smash through the line. I can see that Jeremiah and I, uh, Jeremiah and I did score a try for the North Queensland Cowboys tonight from about five metres out with a couple of blokes hanging off of him. That's the thing. He, <sighs> Jeremiah Nene can leap over the top of his defender. He can drag opponents with him. And yes, he has busted the line. But because he's still so young, uh, he's, I, I think he's still needing to try and find that gap and run his proper line. And Cohen Hess on the other side in that first half um, only had two or three carries of the ball, man, um, and just couldn't burst through the line himself. We just need more happening in between us throwing it all the way out to one edge uh, or the other edge sort of thing. So that's that's something that I think I would put forward or that's the thing that I am putting forward is that there's not enough happening. And again... That there's a little asterisk to, to the Cowboys over the next couple of weeks. Scott Drinkwater's not there. Peter Hicku's not there. Ruben Cotter didn't play tonight as well. Um, so the Cowboys are playing not at full strength and ended up playing with only one fresh bloke on the interchange bench uh, by the end of the contest uh, with players in and out of position, Jake Granville being one of them, playing at centre uh, inside of Kyle Felt. So by the 20... By the 23rd, 25th minute or so, um, it was uh, eight points to nil to the Gold Coast Titans. There was a penalty given away and they went over um, and scored a penalty goal. Uh, then it wasn't until five minutes before halftime uh, that they were able to score that try through Jeremiah Nene um, to make it 8-6 at the halftime siren. And I think what changed, to their credit, absolutely, is James Tarmo came on. Cohen Hess played more of a... I think Cohen Hess actually came off, actually. Cohen Hess came off, uh, and if he didn't, he played more of a, a, a forward role. But I think the game sort of changed when James Tarmo came onto the paddock, and then they finally got some got some momentum after the 35th minute when Jeremiah Nene scored uh, his first try. Uh, and then that second half came about, and the Cowboys started really well. The Cowboys started the, the, the game so well. Um, the boys found themselves in red zone opportunity. Chad Townsend received the ball pretty much underneath the sticks, passed back on the outside, passed back to the outside towards James Tarmo. And James Tarmo ran directly to where the play the ball was and Every defender from the Titans just about had left that space. And it was a yawning gap for James Tamo to stroll through and score his first try for the Cowboys since 2016. So an awesome moment for James Tamo for sure, man. But then they, on the very next set for the Cowboys, they gave away a bloody shepherd penalty, an obstruction penalty, unfortunately. Tom Dearden looked like he was about to go 80 meters to score a try. Um... But it was deemed that he ran behind uh, Hylam Lukey, bro. Um, so then in the 50th minute, the Titans had some good attacking opportunities. And Tanner Boyd just bit off more than he could, he should have chewed. Uh, so he threw a massive cutout pass for Philip Sami. And Valentine Holmes, from his own 10-meter line, said thank you very much and ran 90 meters to score an intercept try. Five minutes later... Boy, howdy, David Fafita had himself, I, I think it was David Fafita, um, popped the ball. Um, they were about 30 metres out, the Gold Coast Titans were. They D David Fafita passed it to Carm Pereira, and his speed, it was graphic. He w it, Within a second, he had made 30 metres, 
and scored his second try uh, for the Gold Coast Titans. Um, their, 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 their last try of the entire uh, of the entire evening as well. And so it was about 18-12 after a period there. And with eight minutes to go, the Cowboys were on the attack again. Chad Townsend had the ball on the last tackle. And what did Hylam Lukey just to simply die with the ball? Well, Hylam Lukey looked to get the offload away. Tom Chester was there. And it sort of, well, it did. It falconed him in the melon. Didn't touch his hands. He got his boot to the ball. Ball ricocheted off a Titans defender. And I've been calling, and a lot of people have been calling Tom Chester an absolute pit bull of a player. Just fights for absolutely everything. And he dove over one player and beat another Titans player to get his finger onto the ball. Tom Chester with the match winner again. Tom Chester with the impressive uh, performance last weekend as well. Tom Chester, bro. Welcome to first grade. You are an absolute first grader, bro. I was nearly about to say superstar, but I think you've got another two or so years before we get to that stage. But you know what? I, you all know what I mean. This Tom Chester, bro, solid, solid as a friggin' rock, bro. Um, and then the Titans, they they tried, they toiled extremely hard um, to 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 get back into the game, but alas, it was just all too much. And the North Queensland Cowboys won 24 points to 12. The best part about all that is that my concern was the Cowboys had leaked 18, 26, 28 points in in their three matches uh, against different opposition leading up to this contest this afternoon. They kept arguably one of the top three best attacking teams to only 12 points. And the Titans were completing at 80% by the end of the contest. It was a good game of footy, um, a bit stop start, but the Titans, bro, um, they, they're they going to go extremely close, I think. I, I feel they're going to go extremely close to making that top eight. And credit to them. They, they, they had the Storm score 34 on them last week. Um, and restricted Cowboys to only 24. I mean, it is an improvement, um, but still there's a little bit of negativity around the way the Cowboys are or are not attacking uh, so far in 2023. But again, that's because we don't have a full strength side. Um, so some of the players that I thought were, were a standout for Cowboys, it's kind of hard to actually pick a man of the match or a top three uh, in this game anyway, because... While they were in, there was some performances this afternoon that were, I could say, that was Jeremiah Nene's best performance so far in 2023. That was Tom Dearden's best performance so far this year. Um, Jason Tamalolo only ran the ball about eight or so times for only 80 meters, and that's about the second time in a row that he's done something like that. Um, Reese Robson as well, a little bit more quieter, probably his quietest game, but still not a bad game. I got to say though. The way the boys started was very frustrating and really disappointing as well. Uh, Griffin Neem had his first start and only carried the ball six times throughout the entire contest. Uh, Cohen Hess only hit the ball up twice in that first half. Jeremiah Nene had a similar sort of stat in that first half. Without Jordan McLean in that first half, uh, who ended up having... 10 carries for 122 running meters or, or a number of or, or, or that accurate number. Um, I thought Jordan McLean was great. I thought his defense was uh, rock solid as well. Jeremiah Nene, I was getting close to saying that's man of the match material, but then he got sent to the sin bin and came back on and while well, he made a good tackle here or there, um, didn't really quite get back into what he was doing before uh, he upended Philip Sami. So Jordan McLean, Jeremiah Nene, and Tom Chester as well, man. Tom Chester did not drop a ball the entire game. Uh, took a took a marvelous catch at one point. I think it was the first one of the game, actually. Um, very, very safe under the high ball um, in his in his two performances in 2023. And even thinking about his performance last year in his uh, debut game against the Cronulla Sharks, man. Um, so I'd say McLean was the man of the match, closely followed by Tom Chester and Jeremiah Nene. So North Queensland Cowboys, they now sit 11th on the live ladder. 
it will probably change or hope hopefully hopefully go higher but at the moment Cowboys are sitting on 11th position at the moment and the Cowboys have an eight day rest before they travel outside of Queensland for the first time this season to play the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs at Sydney Olympic Park. That is going to be a very revealing, very, very interesting game of footy. Peter Hiku is going to be back for the Cowboys and talk about timing. Shibasaki filled in for Hiku's shoes over the past fortnight. And today, Shibasaki is another honorable mention. Shibasaki ran, I think, just under Valentine Holmes. I think Shibasaki ran for about 140 meters and all of them was just shit hit ups man that was a that was a really really good performance from Giamma Shibasaki man but unfortunately he did his hamstring and I hope he recovers very very quickly um but back to uh, just very quickly to wrap things up Cowboys away to the Bulldogs next weekend Petter Hiku comes in so that's an automatic switch with uh the unfortunate injury to Shibasaki Baritel Lungi uh is going to be out for at least a month therefore I think Robert Derby, the Papua New Guinean international who just impresses every single time I see him. I think if Robert Derby hasn't picked up an injury um, this weekend or isn't injured already, Robert Derby should fill the shoes of Murray Talangi uh, and partner Valentine Holmes on that edge. I think, I feel, Jeremiah Nene is going to be suspended next week. If not, great. But if he is... Hylam Luki is going to start. Cohen Hess is probably going to remain the starting second rower as well. It's time for Riley Price and Taniela Sajrugu to make their first grade debuts. Absolutely, bro. With Nene possibly out next weekend with James Tamo now injured, Taniela Sajrugu and Riley Price get them into first grade and have them rip and tear because you're going to need a Taniela Sejrugu type of body to combat Viliami Kikau next weekend. Todd Payton, please, bro, let's get a bit more youth. Let, let's get some of these superstar or young kids, sorry, not superstars. Let's get some of these men that we've been clamoring for to debut for a while now. Get them in. Robert Derby, say Drugu and Price, get them debuting next week, bro. Um, but Cowboys, much improved. Their attack in the middle of the park and in their own territory can be bloody good. Um, but they get down to that red zone territory. It's a bastard. Um, and the, defensively, the Cowboys only let 12 points in. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic defensive effort as well, considering we were down a man um, as well for a 10 minute period. That's it for me. Um, it was a very expensive game in the end, a very, very costly uh, victory as well. Or hopefully not anyway. Hopefully the boys can uh, travel outside of Queensland for the first time this year and uh, prove that they can win on the road big time. So thank you very much for giving this stream a crack or giving this video a crack. And um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you. Adios. Go Cowboys. And I almost forgot.